Hi there! Welcome to the Paper Pixie Live. It's Wednesday evening. Welcome to both my Facebook and YouTube audience. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S. and I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. And for about the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to share a project from start to finish. I'll show you a quick sneak peek. We're doing a gift card holder. This is a magic sliding gift card holder. I will show you the full effect <laughs> when I flip the camera, but that's what we're doing tonight. So welcome. I see that Rhonda and Hermina are on early and Nancy, hello, Karen, hi. Hello, hippie Kansas girl, I love that name. Julie, Andrea, Myrtle, Irene, welcome. Hi, Barbara. Debbie, thank you for sharing. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Nancy. Gail, Marlene, welcome. I'm going to quick show you. If you're new, this is my blog, thepaperpixie.com. I post projects every weekday to inspire you. And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email. And you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. My monthly host code for December is right there on the screen, KNHQQV47. Please use that host code on orders under $150. You do not use the host code if your order is $150 or more. That way you'll get to use the Stampin' Rewards that you earn on orders of $150 or $150 or more for yourself. And my free gift this month, because it's only December 2nd, but with orders of $75 or more is the Dainty Diamonds 3D Embossing Folder. So that's the scoop for this month. Let's see. I think that's all I have to show you as far as um, business as usual. Let me go back to the comments here. I've got my husband Brian on the side. One of these days I'll pull him on camera to say hello, but he's watching your comments and he'll pop up questions that you have on the screen. Hi, Angie. Kathy, Betty. So stay tuned to the end. I'm going to announce last week's prize patrol winners and then also tell you how to enter into this week's prize patrol. So stay tuned for that. We'll do that at the end. Thank you. Oh, yes, Arena, that's right. She says she's the girl who I helped sending you her the link to the faceted ornament box. Yes. Awesome. All right. I think. Um, let's see what else I did get to pre-order from the new January to June 2021 and January to February 2021 celebration brochure. Um, I have the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine on its way to me. I will receive that tomorrow. If you cannot wait until January 5th to get your hands on those products, the best thing you can do is to purchase the starter kit. You'll be able to add the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine to your starter kit order, as well as products from the upcoming mini and celebration catalog, which is very cool. Actually not celebration <laughs> because those are freebie items, but from the new mini catalog, because as a demonstrator perk, we get to pre-order that starting was Monday, December 1st. And that's available on a starter kit order as well. You get to choose up to $125 worth of product. For only $99, it also ships for free, which is a 10% discount. So that's one way if you have the can't waities, or if you're looking for an idea to give yourself for Christmas, the starter kit's a great option. So, um, all right, let's see. <laughs> the cute reindeer, yes. Oh, awesome, Debbie. She just cased my snowflake wishes card. Thank you. All right, I think I'm going to flip the camera here and jump right into the project. Do that. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Okay. So here is the project itself. Now I have done a magic slider treat box, I think is what I called it. It was back three years ago. But what I love about these is they really are magic. So I have a gift card stuck to the top and then um, a panel here that is, I think I'm probably gonna stamp the sentiment in a different spot when we do tonight's project, but you can write a little sentiment here. And I know you all are looking for probably some last minute gift ideas, so that's exactly what this is. Gift cards are always fun and easy to give, and why not make it a magic wow project? So 
Let's go ahead and do that. Hopefully I can keep track of all the measurements. Believe it or not, there's no template tonight because there's no cutting. All the pieces are, um, there's just some simple scoring. So no, no template tonight, but this is what we're making. All right, let me grab, I forgot that I also have show and tell, but we'll do that at the end right before prize patrol. And it's funny, my reds look slightly different, but they're from two different packs of paper. So we're gonna start with a piece of real red cardstock. This measures three and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Pardon me. <laughs> I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored. And along the seven and three quarter inch side, I'm gonna score this at three eighths, two and seven eighths, and five and three eighths, okay? So a seven and three quarter inch side, three eighths, two and seven eighths, five and three eighths. That's the only scoring we've got to do for this project. And I always forget to turn off my watch face. Let's see if I can do that. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. I've got my ruler here in case I forget any of the measurements. So I think you'll notice that this last panel, well, maybe you can see it better. It doesn't quite, it's not exactly the same size of the other two panels. And that's just so that this edge doesn't get in the way. Now we're gonna do a little trick to this panel. I'm actually just gonna come in with my ruler. And from the folded edge, I'm just gonna make a little tick mark because I want to sort of mark the middle point, so. Let's mark it at one and a quarter. Hopefully you can see that I just made a teeny tiny little tick mark, one and a quarter. Same thing down here on the bottom panel and that's just gonna give me an idea of sort of where the center point is. And then I'm gonna bring in the essential tag punch. And we're gonna come in, I like, so there's a number of different punches you probably could use. I think when I did my project back in 2017, I think it was a watermelon punch. It was one of our um, fruit punch packs. This essential tag punch I like because the width of it, it's about seven eighths of an inch here at the top and it works really well for this project. So I'm just going to come in and center that little tick mark. I'm gonna bring this closer to the camera and I'm only going in about an eighth of an inch and then I'm gonna punch. And that's gonna give us a little notch and it's gonna look a little bit off center, but it's not. Um, it's because this panel's a little bit uh, narrower. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so going in about an eighth of an inch, centering that little mark that I made. You can always eyeball this too, but you know how I am with trying to get it accurate. And now we've got this little panel here. So if I have the these are now valley folds the way I'm, I'm holding it. I've got the three eighths of an inch section down here at the bottom. I'm gonna bring in, let's see, I have a Ziploc bag. Now you can use a Ziploc bag. Everybody's got these in their pantry or their drawers in their kitchen. You can use our um, cellophane bags, but I just grab a quart bag here and then grabbing the paper trimmer we are gonna cut a strip. Now, I before I started with this bag, I cut the bottom off so that this was open, okay? And I'm gonna line up this right edge at 7 eighths of an inch. So we want it to be about, to really fill the width of that essential tag punch. And it's really easy to cut the plastic bag with the paper trimmer, but now we've got a 7 eighths of an inch strip, okay? We're done with the plastic bag, but save that because you can get quite a few strips out of the quart bag. I'm gonna come in, we've got a seam here, okay? I'm just gonna gently, or gently, <laughs> I'm just gonna cut off the seam so that this kind of opens the bag, okay? Now we do have that seam in the center and that's okay, we're gonna work with that. All right. So I'm gonna actually turn it this way. So I've got this panel with the punch out here on the right. I'm gonna grab tear and tape for this. And hopefully this will make sense. This is how my brain works to put it together. I am gonna to place tear and tape 
right up to that top edge of the plastic bag where I cut that seam, okay? Then, now it's on the top of the bag, actually. It's on the top of the bag. I had it flipped the wrong way. I'm gonna place that right here at our little notch, okay? And then I'm gonna bring the plastic bag around and over. But I'm gonna pull it down slightly, and I hope I'm doing this right. I practiced a bunch of times, but see where that seam is? Because this is a wider box than my project I did in 2017, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna be stuck with the seam. It just is what it is. So um, <laughs> I want to make sure that that's and we actually don't even have to do that. We can slide it um, after we've adhered it. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the tear and tape. I'm not pulling this super tight or super taut, but I'm pulling it just enough that it's not gonna be super loose, and just press it down over that tear and tape. Okay, this is actually what the slider function is. I'm going to remove all this excess, just come in and cut it right up to the tear and tape. Okay, so now we've got this plastic bag strip that is wrapped around where we notched. Okay, and I think you can see how that's going to slide. All right, so I'm going to put this aside for a second. Let's focus on the inside pieces and then I'm going to show you how to put this together. Okay. We got a question. How was your Thanksgiving with the take-in meal? Oh, you made the biscolata treat boxes, Elaine. Our Thanksgiving dinner was really good. We ended up having at least four full meals out of the food they gave to us. It was food for a family of four. And I don't know, I mean, it was so much food. So we had at least four good, healthy meals out of it. We were able to have turkey, for one meal and salmon for another and the um, beef tenderloin for another so it was really really good thank you for asking and relaxing as well because we didn't have to cook but i did make mashed potatoes so <laughs> all right so i've got one panel that measures two and a quarter by four and a quarter and another panel that measures two and a quarter by three and a half let me make sure that that's right I have so many measurements here. Yes, and all these measurements will be on my blog post on Friday. So those are both the same width. We're not going to do anything to this one. Do you see how those colors are slightly different? That's funny. I'm then going to bring in the fancy tag topper punch. And you can really use any of our tag toppers here, but I like the looks of this one. And I, if you can see on the back side that we've got a little bit of room on either side of that tag or that kind of scalloped area. That is a full two and a quarter inches. So I'm just gonna feed this into the punch. You kind of have to go in at an angle to get it in there. And then I'm gonna flip it over and just make sure that that is centered. It should be just the perfect width there and punch. Okay, now if you have little paper extras there like I do, just come in with your paper snips and trim that off. There's a little bit of a one over here. All right. Now that I'm making a big old mess, that's a different panel piece, Let me, so I don't get confused. So that was the fancy tag topper punch. We've got three of them, the scallop tag topper, the fancy tag topper, and the delightful tag topper. So take your pick there. Um, this panel we're actually gonna leave as is. We're not gonna add any paper to it. This panel, however, and that was the piece of Whisper White that I forgot to cut. So hold on, let me get that. <laughs> I knew I forgot something. So we want to do two and one eighth by three and three eighths. I thought I cut that, but apparently not. So two and one eighth. by three and three eighths. This is the fun part about being live. Now this panel is gonna fit with about a 16th of an inch all the way around. Okay, so I'm gonna grab liquid glue. Glue those layers together.
and this would probably be the time that you want to write on this panel or stamp on this panel. I'm actually going to go ahead and stamp. I'm going to stamp in the same spot because it'll be easier. So we are using the warm and toasty stamp set. Okay. I love this one. Look at this little polar bear. We're going to use the deer tonight or the reindeer and sharing Christmas cheer. So let's do, um, we'll do our stamping at once. So I also have another panel of whisper white. This measures one and nine sixteenths, one and nine sixteenths by two and 13 sixteenths. So one and nine sixteenths is one sixteenth past one and a half. And two and 13 sixteenths is a 16th past two and three quarters. So bringing in the essential tag punch, that's the same one we use to do our little notch for the clear plastic bag. I'm actually gonna feed this paper right into there to give us those really cool tag corners. Okay, I'm gonna line that up just to that top edge is right at the top of that punch. And you get those really cool tag corners. We're gonna do that to both sides. This gives us the ability to make this tag as tall as we want. And it was a happy accident. I was trying to come up with a panel to fit on the front and then I realized that the reindeer was gonna fit. So, all right, let's do our stamping. We're kind of doing things a little bit out of order but it helps to do a lot of this ahead of time. We're gonna stamp on this panel the sharing Christmas cheer. This is the tuxedo black ink. And I'm going to eyeball this at the bottom. Hold your breath. Let's hope that I get it on there straight. Yay, I did. There's that. Okay. And then we got a question. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You love when I use 16th. I love it. <laughs> All right, then the reindeer. Now again, hold your breath. Let's make sure I can get this on here straight. I do like to make sure that I've got really good ink coverage on his nose. And we're going to try, pardon my head in, this, in the camera. Let's hope, let's hope he's lined up right. Yes, all right. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. I'm going to show you while the heat dries for a few seconds the Stampin' Blends I'm using. I was laughing because I, um, I label the ends of my Stampin' Blends. This is just with my label, brother label maker, and I had flip-flopped the soft suede dark and the soft suede light. Like I put them on the wrong markers. So when I first did this sample, I'm like, he's looking awfully light. But anyways, so both soft suede Stampin', um, Stampin Blends, light and dark. The dark basic black, yeah, basic black dark and real red dark, okay? So I'm gonna come in. Does anybody else color while sitting down? It's hard, I have to sit down while I color, so it's always um, interesting to do this standing because I stand when I live broadcast. I'm gonna start with the black and we're gonna go ahead and color in his feet. And if there's questions, let me know, I'll pop up and look. This is the fun part. We good? Do we have a question? Oh, hey, why do you not see me use the Stamparatus? That's a good question. I always just forget to use it um, because I'm usually creating these projects almost right before I go live. But I do love my Stamparatus, especially when I'm doing multiples. Great question. The Stamparatus is actually the way to go, especially when you're stamping with basic black or with a, with a black ink just in case you don't get it right. All right, so those are his feet or his hooves. So with blends, Ava, you actually use the memento because the blends are alcohol-based. The memento is water-based, so you want to flip-flop. So if you're water coloring, so with our water-based inks in water, you wanna use the stays on, which is a solvent ink. So it's kind of backwards the way that works. And it's just because the two different mediums won't make each other bleed. So that's why you use solvent ink with water coloring and you use alcohol ink or alcohol markers with water-based ink. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's come in and do his pretty bow in real red, dark real red. And if you want this real red to be richer, you can actually go over it twice. It'll get a little bit darker each time. 
And I love using the Stampin' Blends over the Stampin' Write Markers when I'm uh, coloring a stamped image, just because of the fact that you don't really get any harsh lines with these alcohol markers. They make you look like an artist. It bubbles up with liquid glue. I'm tired of, all right, let's see. I always use good cardstock, but it bubbles up with liquid glue. I mean, I try um, burnishing not necessarily with a bone folder, but make sure you're pressing down where you put the glue to really get that glue to thin out. Um, and also try to be a little bit lighter handed with your glue so you're not using as much. And that should hopefully reduce where you can see that liquid glue kind of bubbling up from behind. Hopefully that answered your question. I'm coming in with the light soft suede. I'm just gonna do the inside of his ears. And I am not an artist, I just picked and choose, picked and chose, chose and picked <laughs> the colors I wanted to use. Um, I am, you know, I'm easy. Coloring is relaxing to me, but I am not an artist. So you're not gonna see me actually doing any blending per se. But we're gonna do his antlers in the lighter and the inside of his ears. And now the, his body in the dark soft suede. So cute. He's cute, even not color, but this just gives him a little bit more personality. And he just looks so handsome with that red bow. I love all the critters in this stamp set, so I'll show it to you again. Yeah, see, it's weird standing and coloring. <laughs> I do have a story to share with you this week. So my five-year-old Nolan asked me to marry him this week. It was really sweet. He was emotional about it too. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm already married to your daddy. But it was sweet. All right. If you chose one tag topper punch, which would it be? Oh, Mary. I actually will probably go with my tried and true, the first one, the scalloped tag topper punch. Uh, that one works really well, especially if you want to round the opposite corners with a corner rounder. So yeah, scallop tag topper punch. It's probably the punch I've used the most for um, the tag topper punches with my 3D projects. It's another one of those punches that I hope Stampin' Up! never retires because I couldn't live without it. I said the same thing about the envelope punch board too, but I survived when they retired that from Stampin' Up! I still use it secretly. <laughs> All right, this guy's almost done. This is a fun project that you can just stamp a bunch of them and just sit with the TV on and color a bunch of these guys. All right, so I've got a piece of real red and this piece measures, now I have so many measurements written down, it's faster for me to just look it up. One and three quarters by three, okay? So that's just gonna give him a nice little um, matte border there and liquid glue. So Hermina, I'm doing really, really light and then I'm just gonna burnish this down with my fingers, not with a bone folder, but so that I don't get that glue bubbling up. And Stampin' Up's Whisper White is different than most card stocks. It's got um, a little bit of a shinier look to it. It's not really shiny, but my understanding is the Whisper White has clay in it so that our ink will sit on top of the Whisper White. And so that might be why you don't really see the adhesive bubbling up behind it. But so that's that panel. I'm going to wait to glue. Actually, I do need to glue this one down. So let me... I'm going, I'm thinking this through. Okay, so I've got my score lines now in mountain folds. This panel is gonna go right here in the middle. And this piece measures <laughs> two and three eighths by three and five eighths. This is a different pattern than this version, but these this comes from the uh, Warm Hugs. Heartwarming Hugs designer series paper. Just a tiny little red pattern on the back to give um, a little bit of pizzazz behind the deer.
So it's going on the panel just above our plastic bag. Well, this is gonna be the test here if I can remember how to put this together. I do like the blends better than the markers, Kathleen. Um, and really it is for, for coloring purposes, just because they blend so well into, especially Whisper White or Very Vanilla. You don't really get any harsh marker lines. I mean, Stampin' Write markers have their place in my craft room, but I usually use them mostly for either color coordinating my notes on the inside of cards to the project or um, direct to stamps to do, um, you know, coloring a stamp in multiple colors, okay? So we've got this panel here. Where can you get the Stamparatus? Paula! So that is offered through um, Stampin' Up! And if you are in the US, my online store, the easiest way to get to that is the paperpixie.com slash shop. You'll also see that in the description of this video, whether you're watching it on Facebook or YouTube, but it is a great stamp positioning tool. Um, okay, so, all right, <laughs> see if we can do this. Let's get the ribbon on this piece. <coughs> so that I can remember which direction this goes. So I'm going to cut a piece. This comes from the, I think it's Forever Greenery. Hold on. Oh, Flowers for Every Season ribbon combo pack. That Whisper White. I love the width of this one. And we're going to cut this to six inches. Doesn't have to be exact. And we're going to do a little Vera Bradley ribbon pool on here ribbon pull instead of pool. I do have a December code, Kathy. Thank you. I posted it at the beginning. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. This is my December host code. KNHQQV47. Thank you. All right. So I'm just trying to pay attention to where's the front and where's the back. There's not usually a side of the paper. I do want to share a quick tip with you. You know how sometimes you can get that little bumpy edge when you cut? Use your bone folder and then you can just smooth that edge out and it gives you a much nicer finish there. I know that's probably hard to see. All right, Vera, Bra Vera Bradley, this is what I call the Vera Bradley ribbon pull. You know the ribbons on Vera Bradley bags? So I'm gonna feed one end through the back and I just kind of use my index finger on my left hand. I'm gonna loop this around the front to the back. Okay, so we've done like a loop-de-loo there. Feed it back through, and this works with all of the tag topper punches. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over and then pass that up through that loop that we created. And what that does is give you a really nice finish on the front and a really nice finish on the back. No twisting of the ribbon. Okay, I'm gonna pull that pretty taut. And then I'm going to come in, I'm using ribbon scissors here and cut on an angle. Okay. So there we go. This is the front where we've got the ribbon coming around the front. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to beg, borrow, or steal my gift card from the other project. Um, see, I used a little bit of the Stampin' Seal Plus. Let's be careful with that. <laughs> And I'm going to grab that for now, but I actually, on a project, if you're going to give it to someone, I'd use two glue dots. I don't even know where I put it. Let's see. I'm just using this because what I can do so that I can repurpose this, well, so that I could actually use my gift card, <laughs> I just put a little bit of the Stampin' Seal Plus. But again, I would use glue dots for that, okay? And I'd do two because then that would keep your gift card from wiggling around. And then I'm just going to just center that on that section, okay? We're going to wait for this guy. These are our two pieces that we need to attach to create our magic gift card slider. So while we've got this open, I'm going to come in with tear and tape and put it on that 3 eighths of an inch piece so that's ready to go, or that 3 eighths of an inch section. And this is where the magic is going to happen. Now I'm gonna sort of eyeball this. You're gonna see me do that quite a bit. This is the front, obviously, where we put the paper. I've got our seam is gonna be at the bottom here. here. And then we've got this panel. This is what the trick is. You've got this piece in the center. So technically, 
this one and I'm eyeballing, I'm just like, I'm putting it together so I can imagine where I need to put the adhesive. So this one's gonna come out from the left. Well, it's gonna be the bottom, but the left for purposes of this. And this one is gonna come out from the right. But they need to be separated in this center panel. Okay? This is kind of how it's gonna go together. And I, trust me, I would dry fit this first so that you, sort of like the whole measure twice, cut once. <laughs> so as I'm picturing this, this piece, the one that we want to come out the bottom, we want to adhere it face down on this panel. This piece, we want to adhere face up, but on that panel, okay, do you see that? So here's the trick. I've kind of figured that out. I'm gonna fold this panel down. I'm gonna pull this one out because that doesn't need to be in our way right now. So this panel needs to be stamped side, face down, I have this panel folded down from the top, okay? But what we want to do, and let me, pay, let me see if I can do this the right way. Okay, you want your seam to be here on the right, okay? I'm grabbing tear and tape, which where did I put it? I'm gonna put tear and tape right here on the edge. It's not a big deal if the seam gets in your way, it's still gonna work for you, okay? So tear and tape here, and that means tear and tape on the opposite side here. Let me sh I'll show you again in a minute. We're putting the tear and tape only on the plastic bag so that it can slide around freely. So we've got our 3 8 of an inch section on the bottom. We're folding this panel down. Tear and tape here. If you fold it up, then tear and tape here. And it's gonna slide this way. So you just wanna try to put the seam so that the seam is not having to go over the edge. I hope that that makes sense. So let's do this. We're going to peel off the tear and tape. This panel, we want, we want it to come out this way, but it's gotta go this way. So I'm going to line up. I'm centering it, but I'm putting it right to that bottom edge of that panel and pressing down. Let me show you that. Okay, bottom edge here. It's sticking now to the plastic. Now I'm gonna flip this one over. This one we're going to adhere, and I know it doesn't look right, <laughs> but we're gonna adhere the back side to this piece of tear and tape. Now this time we're gonna center it along that top edge. And pressing down. Okay, so now, okay, that one was face down, that one was back down, and then this piece is gonna go and we're gonna tuck it between these two pieces. I know this probably looks really confusing, I will have a shortened YouTube tutorial that you can pause and rewind and replay as many times as you need to. But just to show you, this tear and tape piece, the piece that's gonna stick this all together, needs to go between these two sections, okay? So let's go ahead and take the tear and tape off. And it's gonna go over that stamped piece. And just take your time, you're lining up that edge, like so. Now here's hoping I did this right. <laughs> oh goodness, all right, so we're gonna pull. Ready? Oh, it worked! Now it's not working, hold on. <laughs> I think the seam got in the way. There we go. Oh gosh, nothing like on a live, but look at that. Oh, I love it. I could do this over and over and over again and it's still gonna stand up to it with all that. You know the recipient's gonna keep doing that over and over. Did I have to do this more than once to get it right? Cindy, I definitely did on the one I did with the Ghirardelli square. So on my blog post on Friday, I'll be sure to link to that tutorial as well. That one has three dimensional sides so because it holds, so when you pull it out, instead of a gift card, it's a Ghirardelli square and then the sentiment. 
and the orientation of it is actually landscape. This one technically is portrait, okay? But yes, I did have to do that. Now it's giving me a hard time. It's that seam. <laughs> um, but it, the key is to do the dry fitting first so you can kind of see how the mechanism works, okay? Now, let's go ahead and put on our cute little reindeer. And I'm gonna do actually five of these, one in each corner and then one so in the middle so he doesn't have a saggy middle. A hair pitter patter of little feet again. <laughs> and that's just gonna center on this panel, okay? There we go. And then he needed some bling. When I did the sample, I'm like, you know what? He needs some bling. So the red rhinestone jewels, I love these. Well, I'm not using them. I need to use more of them, but these are beautiful. So I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool. And this project's fun for any occasion. Obviously I'm doing Christmas, a gift card for Christmas, but this would be so cute for birthdays, teacher appreciation, you name it. Oh, thank you. Oh, strips of plastic garbage bags. That's a great suggestion, Sharon. Um, especially if you have bigger, you know what would work probably is a gallon bag. <laughs> so you don't get that. Oh yes, Rhonda, see? We're on the same page, you're right. So yeah, um, that's what I, when I made again with the Ghirardelli one, it was a perfect size without that seam getting in the way. So yeah, try to get a bigger cello bag or a gallon bag. Maybe I will use that one for my Facebook or my YouTube tutorial. But that is our magic sliding gift card holder. What time Friday will it be available? So Kathy, I will post, it typically posts at 5 a.m. Eastern time on my blog and to YouTube the video, okay? So if you subscribe to YouTube and you hit the bell icon and set up your notifications to receive all notifications, you will get a ping from YouTube to let you know there's a new YouTube tutorial from me. Um, or you can subscribe to my blog at thepaperpixie.com slash subscribe and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new blog post, okay? So that's the project. If you have more questions about it, just let me know. We're gonna jump into, um, I've got quick show and tell and um, prize patrol, okay? So we got winners from last week. I'm gonna leave this here so you can see what we made tonight. Um, I received this really cool box in the mail from Stampin' Up. This is for my $200,000 career sales milestone, but a really cool pin that came in the mail this week, some happy mail. And these are their new boxes for recognition pins. So that was a fun little show and tell this week. I don't have artwork from the kids, but hopefully next week I will. Now the prize patrol winners from last week, if you're watching, hopefully you are, we have Marsha Ecker. She's our winner from YouTube. I've got both a YouTube audience and a Facebook audience. So Marsha, congratulations. Reach out to me at julie at thepaperpixie.com and send me your mailing address. And our second winner from you from Facebook is Joanne Silva. So congratulations, Marsha and Joanne. If you'll reach out to me, you can either leave a comment or in the contact form at thepaperpixie.com or send me an email at julie at thepaperpixie.com. So congratulations. And tonight's prize patrol is a pack of the classic Christmas six by six designer series paper and the square vellum doilies. Let me tell you how to enter to win. Let's see. All right, so for prize patrol, you want, okay, this is very important for my YouTube audience. Do not leave the hashtag in the live chat. You want to make sure that you leave your hashtag in the comments of the video. So not the chat on the side, the comments of the video. Hashtag prize patrol. Facebook, my Facebook audience, you know where to leave it. You just leave a comment. 
hashtag prize patrol, make sure no spaces. If you leave a space, then my comment picker will not pick up your comment. So US residents only, hashtag prize patrol. You can leave the hashtag either during the live broadcast or the replay between now and when I choose winners for my, uh, I will I choose winners next Wednesday. So you have almost the whole week to leave comments to be entered to win. So again, it's these two. Um, classic Christmas designer series paper and the square vellum doily. So hashtag prize patrol. Congratulations to our winners again. Joanne Silva, Marsha Ecker, reach out. I'll get these in the mail to you. And do we have any remaining questions? Lots of prize patrols. Brian's seeing them all drop really quick. <laughs> oh, it's a good prize patrol. That is exclusive paper that's only available this month. Another quick reminder, I'm actually going to come back and so I'm not talking with my hands too much. The cutoff for wanting to get items in time for Christmas is December 9th. So that's coming up a week from today. Um, it's not guaranteed because obviously shipping these days in the midst of COVID is somewhat unpredictable, but Stampin' Up! has said place orders by December 9th. And what else did I want to tell you? Totally forgot. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I will be live next Wednesday again at 8 p.m. Eastern time, streaming live to both YouTube and Facebook. Again, you can visit me at thepaperpixie.com for projects most every weekday. And I think that's about it. Thank you for joining me. Again, this project will post to show you both versions to my blog on Friday, December 4th around 5 a.m. Eastern time, all the measurements, and I'll explain which measurements belong to what, and recommendation, use a gallon Ziploc bag, don't mess with that, that uh, the seam, um, but that will post on Friday, and I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed week. Happy December, I can't believe it, and I will see you next Wednesday. Thanks, everybody. Take good care. Bye.